said that before. Uh, maybe as a beginning, who of you is working on product? So I asked here around a little bit already. Everybody in product development or services or B2B services? Are you in the service industry or product services. industry? Services or do you give consulting or outsourcing? <coughs> um, outsourcing. Okay. Good, so as I said, I'm Chris and um, I'm here today to let you a little bit know about um, Agile mindset not set into an IT environment, but more into an uh, environment out of the <coughs> IT into a more global environment in the organization. And how, I, how this can help you to build actually more innovative and more um, or better products um, yourself. So this, what I'm talking now here, is actually a set out of different trainings, different, several trainings, different trainings, which are lasting at least two days usually. So in this 25 minutes, I can obviously only scratch the surface. Okay, I put up at 11 um, um, workshops. So if you find this interesting and you want to do something and maybe work on your own products in this workshop, we can do this like for an hour. We can blend into lunch. We have we have uh, time. I just have to catch my flight at 6:30 tonight. That's all. <laughs> so um, yeah, before we actually can start about uh, understanding how an agile mindset can improve innovation, I want to talk a little bit about why we need to innovate. Why it is very important to be innovative. And one of the reasons is that in the last years, the globalization, mostly because of faster internet and more availability all over the world of internet um, is getting stronger and stronger. So theoretically, if the price of coffee drops in Guatemala, it can influence our economy here in Singapore. Okay, um, many, many companies in the world try to keep their business model and in the new recent <laughs> developments, we see that companies die. A very um, Famous example is Polaroid, yeah? So Polaroid is not existing anymore, but they had a very uh, disrupting technology. I mean, you just took a picture and you could look at it. Okay, you wait two, three minutes, but basically that's, that's what it is. Um, if you want to come more in front, I don't have to shout too loud, and it's cool here too. It's cold, cold here too, and we're a little bit more cozy. <laughs> I like that. So, Exactly, so um, um, organizations like that um, are dying, which are already um, um, existing for like 100 years and had a lot of, um, a lot of disrupting innovations. So other examples are like, everybody of you know probably Airbnb. So Airbnb managed it in the last five years to get as many hotel rooms as the Hilton Hotel Group in 90 years. Or hotel rooms, yeah, not real hotel rooms, but <laughs> all for rooms, let's tell it like that. And this, uh, this shows how you can build, or everybody of us can build actually with a great idea, good idea, which solves a problem. We can actually disrupt a whole business model, or yeah, a whole business model. Uber, you can think of them ethically or in terms of management practice, whatever you want, but you cannot neglect the fact that all over the world, cab drivers are going nuts over Uber, you know. <laughs> uh, in Spain, I think they even attacked Uber drivers, cab drivers, I think in Madrid, right? You heard that. So this shows um, how just an idea can actually disrupt a whole business model. Yeah, yellow cabs in uh, New York are endangered, theoretically. And after they, they ban in Spain, now yes. they said that they will do um, Food delivery and this kind of things. I see. Uh, with all the publicity that they got from all this. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, that's that's another idea. And um, it, but this is more about the management tactics and management um, um, priorities. In Germany, they got banned, and uh, the German CEO basically said, Uber said, I don't care. We just we just go on. If you get if you get stopped by the police, what what will they do? They can say, I'm driving with my friend. <laughs> you have no chance actually to to actually get these fees. So another example is Google, which uh, started as a search engine and today is a $300 billion business within like 15 years or 16 years. So you see um, nowadays 
Um, it is not important uh, only to keep your existing business model running, but to look at other opportunities and to look how can we keep going, how can we st still contend with such disrupting organizations coming out of nothing, right? So um, in the last decades, the duration of a Fortune 500 company <coughs> dropped dramatically. I don't know the exact numbers, but uh, the duration of a company being in the Fortune 500 got less and less and less over the last decades. That means that just being big doesn't give you anything. Just having maybe a now good running business model doesn't mean you, um, you will survive forever. I think General Motors is kind of insignificant <laughs> nowadays, even though that was the biggest car supplier in the world. Um, as an next step, I want to talk a little bit what is an agile mindset. And everybody, I guess, who doesn't know this? The Agile Manifesto. Is anybody here who never read that or never seen that? I never heard about the Agile Manifesto. You heard about it? You didn't hear it. Okay. Yeah, you heard about it. Okay. <laughs> okay. If you're more interested into this, I cannot go into detail during 25 minutes. We later talk in the breakout room. If you're interested in the workshop, we can decide <coughs> what we're talking on and what we're, what we're doing in the, in, the, in the breakout room. But basically, also about 15, 16 years ago, a group of software engineers came together and said, the way we are doing software today doesn't work. 70% of all projects fail in terms of um, getting more expensive than initially planned or are taking longer than initially planned. I think it's even 76% or something like this. So they came together and said, the way we are doing software is not good. We need to change something. So they put over the Agile Manifesto. Learning from other industries. So there's a lot of lean manufacturing inside. There's a lot of uh, management theories, unfortunately, at that time. It's getting more practical. But um, there's a lot of these ideas inside this uh, Agile Manifesto. And uh, now they claim, of course, they claim always they're doing best, that they're doing better software now. The uh, real purpose of this one is also to create business value for your customers. So you create a product, or you have a project, or you run an outsourcing project and you want to create a value in the end, okay? And you're giving this by being transparent to your people and let your people be in the process in the whole process involved. Traditional processes like waterfall are following like an assembly line. So everybody's standing in the loan in the row. So you have first the architect, he's doing something, then it goes a step further, the designer is doing something, he's going a step further, the developer's doing something, the tester, the maintainer, and the maintainer only if you get paid because you were over, over time. So this actually splits up all these roles. Yeah, it doesn't think in this assembly line mentality anymore. Okay, it gives lets everybody build the product and the project or deliver the project together. <coughs> and this is um, based on a theory which came, came actually a little bit later, but if you look at it now, you think that this could be actually the basis how Simon Sinek described it in, the, in his um, Golden Circle. Anybody knows the Golden Circle? Yeah. Okay, uh, nice. So I don't have to, no, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that's exactly what, what, what uh, Agile later is based on, because you, in, Agile, in an Agile team, you give transparency over the whole project, over the purpose of the project, and you let everybody participate. And this is what's happening here too with the why. So the purpose of a project is basically also the why in the golden circle. And um, Simon Sinek says it from a view of a, from communication. He says, if you communicate your why and the real purpose for what you stand for in your organization, it's much more easy to find mind-like, like-minded people who connect very easily with you. And that's the real reason also in the Agile Manifesto. So you find easier people who are connected with you, who are more encouraged to do the best for the project and work on a like-minded set. We can go more detailed into the golden circle also in the breakout room if you're interested. But <laughs> I can really not cover um, too much details about this. As I said, that's several trainings over like, let's say in total like 10 days. I cannot cover within 25 minutes for, for, for sure. Um, 
Yes. So how does this fit into an agile organization? So what, what, what I always tell people, and I had a long discussion with Rasmus here, I don't know what language this is, and I don't understand it, and I hope it, con it actually confirms what I say. Better don't read it. <laughs> but um, we had this, I had this discussion um, also with, with Rasmus. Many people implement Scrum or XP or Kanban into their development teams, but the whole organization is still working as before with traditional. And then Scrum doesn't work, Agile doesn't work, and then they wonder they play Scrum. Okay? The only thing why they say Scrum or Agile or whatever doesn't work is because suddenly it shows the problem. Waterfall doesn't show problems. It doesn't just say, so, okay, we are late now. Okay, we need to extend the project line. But it doesn't show you in the process problems. And this is what Scrum does. All this um, is um, then based on what Douglas McGregor described in the 60s already with uh, two management models and how you perceive people in your organization. So I like this graphic from Wikipedia because it's actually displaying here already these two management models. This is management model X and management model Y. So um, in management model X, we say, or um, it is said that people are only working because they have to get to work. They need their money to provide for their family, and they need to um, um, yeah, survive. And that's why they think people are primarily driven by monetary value. Opposite to that is the theory why. Theory why says people want to work. People are eager to give the best for the organization if the conditions in the organizations are correct. For example, as I just said, if the organization communicate why they exist, what they are standing for, and um, then they might identify with the same why because they have the same mindset, they have the same values, and that's why they give the best for the organization. So this is a, if you want to build up an agile organization, you need to set the conditions that the, your people want to work. How can you do that? <laughs> I don't know how much time I have left. Uh, 10 minutes, around 9 minutes. Nine minutes I've left. Yeah. Wonderful, I'm perfectly in time. I'm actually below time. <laughs> actually, people are um, I'm time boxed. <laughs> so how can you do this? So what everything goes back, I think everybody knows. Who, who's working with Scrum? <coughs> so you know all this. That's the three legs of Scrum, yeah? Transparency, inspect, inspection, and adaption. So you do this in your Scrum work, you have the sprint planning, you have the daily stand-ups, you have the sprint review, you have the sprint retrospective, you will have the uh, impediment backlight and then you start again with the sprint plan. Blah, 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 blah. And all the spaces on um, Steve Deming's plan, you check act. Who knows the PDCA side? We have a... <laughs> you, 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 want, you want to switch? <laughs> so this is actually where, where, where this works on. And if you want to implement like Agile in your whole organization, which I think you should if you want to do Agile in your development team, you actually need to run this plan, do, check, act cycle during your whole organization. You run it in your operations team, you run it in your development team, you run it in your marketing team, you run it in your support team, you run it in your management team, you run it everywhere. Um, plan, do, check, act is actually what Scrum is doing. So plan, <coughs> plan what you do first, you do it, you check, was it good, and then you act on that one. So you have the sprint planning, you have the sprint itself, you have the retrospective and the review, and then you have uh, again the sprint planning and the uh, impediment backlog, right? How you implement it? So I'm not an advocate for Scrum. I'm not an advocate for Kanban. I'm an advocate for uh, Scrum ban. I'm an advocate for any any process framework uh, which comes out of Agile. I'm just um, there are good things in every of these frameworks. So how you implement it for for your organization doesn't matter. Yeah. I'm also not someone who says that's why in my in the in the in the in the, in the, in the program it's written a lean slash agile mindset because for me it's just one family lean agile management 3.0 um, radical management beyond budgeting whatever it's all it's all actually one family so how you do this where you take your best practices it doesn't matter if you run and it works and you have never delays and it works wonderful for you why should you change. <coughs> You don't need to change for the, for the sake of change, okay? I'm not st sending you to sell you something. I'm just thinking that the traditional ways aren't working as much. Should I restart? 
<laughs> so I, I just think that the, the um, traditional working aren't working. That's why. Sorry, I got back again. Yeah. Fifteen years ago, these guys came together and said, "What we are doing is actually not working. So we need to change something." Um, so far, any questions? I still have a slide we can go run through. As I said, we can go more deeper in the breakout room. So far, no questions. So for innovation itself, as you know, um, in Silicon Valley, where you have the best conditions available in the world for startups for innovative product uh, projects, nine of 10 innovations fail. So if you're thinking about more remote locations, Singapore would be maybe similar. Then we have, I don't know, um, Israel is very famous for its startup culture. Uh, I heard Tallinn is very famous for its startup culture. Berlin is getting a little bit famous. But if you're looking at Ho Chi Minh City or Phnom Penh, <laughs> I don't think that we would probably say that 9.9999999999 out of 10 innovation projects fail. And when I say fail, it means that the money is lost. Fail doesn't mean, okay, we are not Google, we are not Apple but you're still existing. No, it, it's that. So if you're thinking about like this, unicorns, which they are called, one billion dollar evaluated startups, then we are thinking about a chance of 9.99999 out of 10 projects will get a unicorn one day. Okay? So some years, um, um, first of all, don't forget Chris, um, mostly these innovations fail because of two reasons. If you put in innovation into an existing organization, management, directors, and leaderships are afraid of investing into innovations, putting money aside and saying, okay, just do some innovation here. Because they are afraid of the risk going on. They can't really evaluate the risk. Will we get something back, the return on investment? This is one reason. If you're looking at startups, startups fail because they don't really solve the problem. Somebody has a great idea, it might good, it might be super, super duper software, but it doesn't solve any problem for people, for real world people. And that's why Eric Ries, Steve Blank, uh, Alex Osterwalder, Ash Maria came up with this full stack approach, which they call, which was in the book from Eric Ries, Lean Startup, and which can be best explained, which I call an agile approach, which can be best explained at um, this Lean Canvas. So you find different, you can, there's a business model canvas, there's a marketing model canvas, there's a lean, this is the lean canvas from Ash Maria. And I find this the best one because this is working for products the best. If you're working in services, probably the Alex Osterwalder business model canvas is better because it's more focused on this one. So what you're doing in a lean startup model, who knows lean startup? No? <laughs> Not yet? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> It's just my humor, sorry. <laughs> you know it's Lean Startup? No, three minutes. Okay, ah, thank you. <laughs> you know three Lean Startups. <laughs> yeah, so Lean Startup is saying you're basically doing hypothesis, hypothesis experiments all the time and testing that with real world people. Okay, before you do any code, you actually find out first who are my target customers. So you write them in here. Then you decide, okay, or you make assumptions and decide, okay, my target customers could have this problem, this problem, this problem, this problem. So you <laughs> write down your top problems you have. And then usually what starts, okay, cool, I have an idea, let's code this, blah, 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 blah. Done, oh, nobody buys my software, why? No, what they say is, now, before you do any step further, you take your problems, make a small interview, and go out, call your customers, Go to the train station, ask, give them their questionnaire, and ask them, find out, is this a problem? Is this a problem for the people? And then you get a response, and you decide, okay, is this um, a problem we want to persevere? So do we want to go on with this? Do we want to pivot? Do we need to change something? In a small way, in a big way, you don't need to change like 180 degree, you don't need to, but you can change small things in your business, business model, or do you want to quit? And I know if you have an idea, it's very hard to quit, 
it's very hard to quit because you believe in it, this idea, right? You have you give you're dreaming about it and you're waking up and thinking only about this idea. It's very, but it's very hard to give up on this one. But you need to before you lose money because if you don't solve the problem, you don't find you don't find your um, you don't find uh, any revenue out of this. So I will not go through the whole one because I think I'm just at one minute left. But uh, before, uh, when you found out, okay, this is a problem, then you go the next step. What is my solution? Top three features I want to solve. And you're not coding. You're writing another question. Yeah. Is Agua or Dropbox a part of the startup? Dropbox is a very lean startup. Yeah. And what's the other one? Agua. Agua, the uh, company that. Iron Heart. The question and answer company. Uh, Quora. Quora. No, no. Uh, it was, no, it's Agua. It's, it's a point and hold company. I, I don't know this one, I'm sorry. It was hard. Okay, okay. Actually, so Dropbox is a very lean startup. So they made actually. Um, so you're going through. One second, I come to this maybe as a Dropbox as an example, but um, you come up with the features, you don't code yet, and then you go back to your customer and you ask again if you before had this problem, are these features a way of, solu of solving this problem? And if you find out yes, of course you persevere. If you find out no, you check back why, what can be changed, or I didn't spend any, mo any money yet, let's go. I'm coming to questions in a moment. Sorry. Yeah. So, Dropbox did this this way by saying, one, one minute, <laughs> let me just finish the talk. <laughs> Please! <laughs> I had two questions interrupting me. <laughs> no, but um, Dropbox came up actually with this video. They didn't have a line coded. They didn't have any single line coded, but had a video um, displaying how Dropbox works without a single line coded. And this was very. Um, uh, impressive. Um, I'm stopping here, so if you're interested, um, let's go at 11 o'clock, I think at Silicon Straits. Um, we can run a, on your project, a lean canvas, we can talk more about agile mindset, we can talk about the golden circle, whatever you want. Um, I have reserved an hour, and I think we can blend even into lunch if you're not that hungry, so we have time more. Let's make it. Do we have time for questions? Are you the moderator now? Yeah. Yeah? I'll give these two dogs. <laughs> you can keep, keep talking, keep talking. Okay, okay. Yes, I, I, don't, I don't think I need that, so we can... Uh, so. so, what was your question? I don't know. The 